You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Is this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do hear in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up and drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And today I chose to use the prayers for our oppressors. And because of the first reading, about the power of the cross of Jesus crucified, who was obviously and clearly oppressed at the end of his life to the point of death, so cruel. And yet he was forgiving his oppressors. And the first, the gospel reading we have is the beginning of the coverage of the public life by Luke, the gospel of St. Luke. And There we already find in the very beginning of the presentation of the public life, we find Jesus being rejected in his own town. It's a type of an indicator of what's ahead, which will also obviously conclude in Luke's gospel at the passion, death, and eventually then the resurrection. So we are invited by the liturgy today to look at this and to look at the, the spirit that's um, working in Jesus and also in Paul. And Paul himself would go on to say that the, the cross of Christ was uh, madness for the Gentiles and was uh, absolutely counter to the Jewish expectation of a Messiah. So here we have uh, the reality that Paul already accepted that in his life. And not only did he accept it, but he realized that even though he was very learned, he had studied under Gamaliel, and not only on Jewish 
uh, the Jewish religious culture, but also uh, we saw him in Athens uh, in the Acts of the Apostles addressing these very philosophical people, quoting their own poets to build a bridge and to win them academically, and they didn't. They laughed at him, and he is crystallizing the experience he had in Corinth that he was too weak for them. He came in fear and trembling to pronounce the gospel, to show them the mystery of Christ, but he trusted in the power of Christ crucified. And these are very interesting realities. Um, many people don't do well in math or in some other subject because they didn't like the teacher. They didn't connect, there was a bad chemistry, or maybe somebody excelled in a subject that was very difficult and not their natural inclination because the teacher, the coach, was very good at that sport or at that subject in school. And how we can confuse the subject with the messenger, the message with the messenger, and if we don't like the messenger, we don't like the subject. So the people in Nazareth are uh, saying it's impossible that this guy can be the Messiah. We saw him not being able to, to, to run. He was still toddler. And then we saw him growing up and he was normal like all of us. The mystery of God hidden in the incarnation. And they were sifting through this and not finding it possible to accept that this is the Savior. And I was born in a very different situation. I was born since I was the smallest child to experience before I ever understood any words that my parents loved Jesus, that they adored him. And the whole people did in our area because they, we saw them at mass on Sunday. And so from the very beginning of my life, the only attitudes that I received toward Jesus were totally positive. I didn't have any other access route to Jesus and I'm blessed for that. And these people in Nazareth, I cannot judge uh, easily when they rejected Jesus. I also don't know the extent of the grace they had. They heard about the miracles he did. So maybe they were really wrestling with their own narrow human experience and not able in their village mentality to make room that God could be doing something extraordinary through this person. In a way also this invites us to think about how we approach every person. Do we only measure them from the outside, from the way we see them, or are we able to leave greater space that this person can be chosen by God through this person, a lot can happen. And even if it seems to us a lost cause, maybe the person is very sick, maybe they're at the end of their life, maybe they can no longer even feed themselves, and we describe this person as a lost cause, but we have no idea of the mystery of God inside this person. Maybe it's a difficult marriage, and this marriage partner is a lost cause. There's no way God can be doing something marvelous in this person despite the difficulties that this couple is having um, to open the mind and the heart to see it, a difficult child a child that maybe was born Down syndrome, imagine the blockage that naturally ensues from this first impression. And then, thanks be to God, we have so many cases of parents who have embraced their child who was born, even one man who came here recently, without arms and without legs. That's the way he was born. And he is an incredible influencer in the world today. How his parents embraced him and didn't judge him by the fact he didn't have arms or legs. What a shock for parents to receive a child like this. And we can go on to many other cases. And the gospel asks us to be open to the mystery. To be open to the mystery of God in each person because each person is made in his image and likeness. What an extraordinary challenge for us when we are used to picking the best player for our football teams and the best politician we think for our party and the best, uh, we try to get the best for us and everything, go to the best rock group, the best music group, the best baker, the best everything, that's we, we pick them with our criteria, but to realize that God can be doing such a marvel and that 
God can do such a marvel through a crucified Jew in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, so concrete, so bleeding. And Paul learned to change his mind. What an example for us to change our mind, to, in the difficulty, in the hostilities, in the injustices we can experience, that nevertheless, in this context, in this encounter, in this relationship, God can be working marvels. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.